Let's see. Hopefully this works. Oh, it says it's live and it's streaming to Facebook. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Hopefully this all works out. Are you a popular person, Dan? We have a couple, we have a couple thousand people on. Oh, Facebook. that's awesome. So let's see. I'm not. Let's see. Can you see it on your, your on your end? You're seeing it. I'm not. See I, I don't have Facebook open. Okay. I can. Oh, actually, I see it on. Yep. Okay. Good. I have my Facebook open as well. So I think we have one viewer, two viewers already. So we'll just give it a couple minutes, Dale, while we have people sign in. Um, Hey everyone, that's coming. That's coming in here. Um, this is my first time using the Zoom function of uh, of Facebook, so I'm trying to figure out ways that I can see people who might be commenting on uh, Facebook on Facebook, so that if you have comments, um, I can um, answer any questions. Uh, the easiest way though might be if you do have any questions that come up during this time period would be to just uh, type those comments directly into uh, rather than doing it through Facebook Live, just type the comments into the comment box so that then it's easier for, for us to actually see them um, as they come up. So, but on that note, thanks to everyone for uh, viewing in. I'm Dan and um, this is actually my accountant and bookkeeper, Dale. Uh, Peronto, and hopefully I pronounced that la your last name correctly. That's correct. Okay, and I've been working. We've been working together for I was thinking about probably going on three or four years now. You've been you've been doing um, w working as our accountant. And can you just give me a, some quick overview of your work? Sure. Uh, I've been in San Francisco for a little over twenty years now. I've had this practice open. I have, uh, I'm in the 11th year in practice in San Francisco, and I have a second office in San Diego, which is where I'm streaming from this afternoon because I got stuck down here when Mayor Breed put the brakes on everything. I've uh, been practicing accounting and accounting software practices since 1986, so I don't have very much experience, as you might guess, uh, <laughs> about 30 some odd years. <laughs> The, uh, I specialize in small businesses and uh, primarily one to two uh, employees. And the most I take on, my biggest client has 22 employees. My largest one in San Francisco has 17 employees. But those are anomalies. Most of the time, it's five or less employees. And those are the kind of people that are sub S corporations or sole proprietorships. Uh, love what I do. It's. Uh, uh, I wake up every morning and find something different in my email box. Oh, okay, well, that's great. So that, that I think that's definitely very um, uh, a, a very good audience for some of my my friends. Is you know small businesses. People, you know, we have a, we do definitely know a lot of people that are do, part of startups um, have their own different uh, businesses that might be able to get some great inf information from you. Uh, and it's also interesting. I didn't realize that how how long you've been in the business. So you, this is not your first uh, downturn recession that you have worked. Oh, no, for. no, I I wasn't in the nineteen seventeen <laughs> pandemic, but uh, I suffered through the the Great Recession. I suffered through nine eleven, uh, and everything that came with that. I've I'm more of an entrepreneur than an accountant. I I. I've used my degree to run my own companies. I've owned 17 companies of my own in my career. You opened 17 companies? I have owned and operated over oh, 17 wow. different types of companies, yeah. Oh, that's impressive. So uh, can you give any um, background? I mean, have you seen trends that you've seen in the 9-11 time period or the Great Recession? Um, from today? just an observatory trend in 9-11, I was in a scuba manufacturing business then. And after that event occurred, 
of course, travel died that year, the year following it. The only business that actually made money in, in the travel industry after 9-11 were camper uh, mobile homes. And because no one was flying, the only other one that made money were the, uh, were the cruise lines because they would offer basically free passage to get to the ship. Once you were on the ship, you were a captive audience to them. And they actually grew the years after, after 9-11. Not this time, I don't think. Well, yeah, and I could definitely see mobile homes uh, growing in popularity after this, yeah, having your I own agree. little quarantine space that you can live in. Yeah, but well, I don't the Great think Recession was a little bit weirder that of two, what is that, 2009? That kind of affected a lot of different types of people over a large gambit. And I don't, I didn't, although I spotted out more people going into business for themselves, uh, little independent contractors. Uh, code writers, uh, dog walkers spr uh, sprouted out like nobody's business. I have a lot of dog walker clients. And it's uh, it, up until this recent event, every segment of business that I had as clients, and I've got real estate, I've, like I said, I've got dog walkers, I've got doctors, I've got lawyers, I have dentists, every single segment was growing. Now everything stopped, of course. Um, except my business, which doesn't seem to stop, the phone doesn't stop ringing, but I get it. So I'm here for anybody who, I, I, I'm happy to help my clients in any of their needs. And boy, they're, they're stressed right now and, and can't imagine why not. So you said your, your phone hasn't stopped ringing and what are like some, some of the trends that you've seen in the, um, just in the past two or three weeks? As yeah, far as the, the last weeks. two or three weeks, the, the primary phone call has been focused around the SBA loans and unemployment. How do I get, do I, I'm an independent contractor. Do I get unemployment? Those kinds of things. And I've had to read through most of these documents and, and get a synopsis. Luckily, my trade organizations also update us on a pretty regular basis, telling us how they interpret the, the, uh, the law and how it's gonna be played out. Today, for example, was supposed to be the first day that the the PPP loan for payroll protection was supposed to go online for most of the banks. Some of them have it, some of them don't. Uh, Chase, my bank, for example, only gave me a one page document to fill out. And then it says, now you must wait for us to call you. Okay. And then another bank, uh, Wells Fargo, I believe it was the client called me on. She was able to fill it all out online herself and it was all done. I didn't have to help her. I had to supply her some data but uh, particularly payroll data, it's a pretty simple, it's, if you're a business for yourself and you have employees, it's a, it's a pretty simple uh, task to fill out that application, but you need some payroll data first. Okay. Uh, what, what else? Nothing other than that and unemployment. Unemployment has been a challenge. And now even the EDD has indicated that sole proprietorships and people that aren't typically allowed to have unemployment are going to be, are allowed to apply they're not actually processing those applications yet because they're waiting for guidance from the federal government. Interesting, because I had heard that they were opening up it up to more um, more groups of people, but so they're they're kind of putting being put in the back of the line, or no, they're they're accept. I don't know what they're doing. They're accepting the applications, but if you're not a standard W two employee type of third person, they're not gonna they're not gonna process your application because they they don't know how. And that would be your dog walker or your small. Yeah. Your, Anybody's a sole proprietor that gets 1099s, those kinds of peoples. But people that get a W-2, you're going right to the front of the line. Well, as front of the line as one could get, what, 10 million people have applied for unemployment in the last two weeks. Okay. Um, and having gone through this and you, you said you read, you, you read all this, I mean, are there, are there any uh, misconceptions or, you know, any tips or advice that you uh, can that you can, uh, that you've come across? Yeah, biggest tip that I've seen so far is that I've already seen the scammers out there that say they're the IRS and they want you to give them their bank information so they can direct wire your $1,200. Okay. Uh, let me emphasize to everybody who's listening here, do not give those people anything. The IRS will never, ever, ever call you, ever. So if someone's calling you or emailing you for your bank information, just disconnect the call or don't respond to the email. It's a scam. Oh, interesting. So that's the biggest piece of advice on, on, on that $1,200 thing. 
it's amazing that criminals are still rampant. Yeah, they, and, they, they can work from home, so. Exactly. Or they can work from their hut. I don't yeah. know. Um, so the other uh, item I wanted to bring up uh, was about tax filings. I know those have been delayed, I believe until, Ju until June or? No, July 15th for both the state of California and for the federal government have both been pushed out. They, the, the filing deadline has been extended to July 15th and that's also for your payments. So if you owe money to the state or the federal government, those payments will be allowed to be extended out to July 15th as well with no penalties or interest being added. Uh, we haven't gotten clearance from the state as to whether S corporations still are required to pay their $800 by April 15th. I'm waiting for clearance, clearance on that. I'm thinking they probably are going to extend it, but historically when we don't get guidance, you have to fall back on the rules that are in place. So I would advise anybody with an S corporation to pay your $800 minimum tax by April 15th. Uh, they may change it, but right now I don't have any guidance on it. Okay, that's good to know. Um, and but, then how do you, how do wait. You the two, the quarter, the Q1 uh, personal tax and Q2 personal tax. If you're on a, uh, if you're on a quarterly payment, those have been extended to July 15th. So your April 15th minimum quarterly payment for your individual and your June 15th individual quarterly have both been extended to July 15th. Okay, great. And uh, just for anyone tuning in uh, right now, just um, to re to Hashback, I'm uh, doing an interview with my accountant, Dale, and we've gone over several questions about um, small business loans, about unemployment. We're touching a little bit about the, um, the delay in, in taxes that are due. Um, yep. And if you have any comments or questions, feel free to um, just post those directly into the comment section. Yeah, uh, I'm looking at my phone. Questions. Sorry about, about that. Um, small business loans, about unemployment. Okay, I'll shut this off. Little... <laughs> Sorry, it was my that. tablet came up. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Um, and I'll be checking my, be checking my comments on my phone. So if you do have any questions, feel free to write, write them directly into there. And then I can, um, at the end of this, or if they're pertinent to the conversation that we're having, I will ask the questions to deal as, um, as we go. So going back to tax filings, um, I mean, I know like, accountants are generally just super slammed during the month of, of March and April. How have you seen tax filings change your, you know, the delay change, you know, your uh, the personal tax returns have increased significantly over the last month. Uh, since most of my tax returns that I do are, uh, are business tax returns or the owners of businesses. I don't do a lot of single tax returns unless they've been, uh, uh, years of referrals to me. So, but even with those, if you've got a refund coming, they want those filed right away so that they can get their refund. If they don't, if they owe money, they're asking to be delayed. So that's always the case, but it's even more defined right now because of the need for cash coming into the door. They want their refunds as quickly as they can get them. I guess I'll be talking to you after this then. <laughs> That'll be correct. Um, and then, and then for your client, like you've already kind of talked about um, for your clients, how that work um, affects them. Uh, the state and the federal government have been pretty quick about getting refunds uh, direct deposited into your bank account. Okay. The, the state is about six days. And I actually just got a notification from a client that actually got their federal in six days, as well as their state. The federal came in one, I'm sorry, the state came in on day six and the state, the federal came in the next night. So it was amazing. Usually the feds are about two weeks out, but they're, they seem to be stepping up their game. Oh, nice. So I guess the, the big takeaway is if, you know, if someone is expecting a refund, you know, either talk to your accountant or talk to you and um, get it done sooner than later. If you yeah. uh, think you'll be getting a refund, a refund this year. Um, and in this, um, for, I guess, yeah, we already talked about that. So what type of uh, tax strategies would you recommend your own clients use right now, given everything that's going on um, in the current marketplace? Is there anything that you've kind of 
uh, reached out to specific clients and tell them like, this is a strategy that you should be utilizing? Well, since most of them are businesses, I have recommended to all of my business clients to file the SBA applications. There's two that you can file. There was one called the EIDL, E-I-D-L, and then there's the PPP, which is the payroll protection plan. The EIDL one, you, uh, you apply directly on the SBA website and the PPP you have to do through your bank. Uh, like I said earlier in the conversation, most of the banks are offering it online right now today. Some are not yet, they haven't had it available, but you can go, you can go apply for the EIDL, E-I-D-L, disaster loan right now. Uh, now I applied for that on Monday and was told that within three days, $10,000, the pre-approval pre, uh, pre thing would be deposited into my bank. It's now Friday, day five, haven't seen it. Uh, they say, I've heard rumors, this is only rumors, that it's gonna be about two weeks out. It must be the new government calendar, I'm guessing. Five, three days is 10, is 20 it's, days. It's three, it's three government days. Exactly. Um, so I had one question about, uh, that came in about mortgage forbearance and all the different things specifically. I know California. Uh, great question. Yeah. So forbearance versus deferral. I'm dealing with, am I allowed to say my mortgage company? I don't, I don't see why not. PNC Bank, okay. rude. Um, I have, first of all, I would advise you that if you have the money and the funds to pay your mortgage payment or your rent, you should pay them because even forbearance or deferral does not make them go away. That's just pushing off the inevitable. Granted, if we have cash flow issues, you got to do what you have to do. Now let's get out to the story with PNC. I called PNC and asked them what they're offering. And this is what I got told. They are offering a forbearance program that they will, for, they will push out two payments for May and June. And then on July, the entire past due balance plus all interest is due. And I said to them, well, what if they're still going and I can't pay that? Well, during the 60-day forbearance period, no credit reporting will be done, but they told me flat out that in, in the 90th day or in the 61st day, if I became past due, they would report that to the credit reporting agencies. Now, will they loosen up their strings as this goes forward? That much I don't know. I went ahead and paid my mortgage because I, I could pay it right now, but um, I would buyer beware when you're, when you're dealing with your mortgage company. Now, when you're dealing with your landlord, if you're just renting, that's going to be a conversation between you and your landlord, and every individual landlord is going to be different from the next one. They're, they can't force you out, but that doesn't mean they have to be nice about it either. Um, I haven't had any bad stories about anybody. All the landlords are being pretty good right now, at least the stories that my clients have told them. But the, the loan forbearance program for the, every mortgage company, I think is going to probably be a little, a little different as well. Yeah. I mean, I, I can uh, chime in a little bit. We have two, two of our mortgages are with first Republic. And what, and when I spoke to them earlier in the week, they hadn't yet figured out exactly what their um, process would be. I don't know if it's figured out yet, but they're, what they had told me at that point in time is that they were leading towards taking any payments and adding them on to the end of your term. So if you have a 30 year, if it's a 30 year loan, now it's 30 years plus two months or three months or six months. Right. And that would be um, the logical thing to do, although they're biting a the bullet there. They're going to, they're not going to cut down their interest, of course, but yeah. uh, that would be the better thing to do to, to, to have the position of PNC of saying it's all going to come all the, all the stuff that's been deferred is going to come due and payable on July 1st, it doesn't, it, it's no, it has no value unless yeah. you absolutely don't have any uh, revenues in order to pay it. Yeah. So you definitely need to talk to your, your individual bank to see what, what they're doing. Um, we have uh, Aaron Brown is watching us now. Hey, Aaron, want to do a shout out? Uh, Hi, Aaron. He's a, he's a, another realtor over in the East Bay, a great, a great realtor over there. So uh, Aaron, if you have any questions, feel free to send them, send them our way. Um, and I am just, com you can just comment in the comment box if you, with any questions. So the next thing that I wanted to ask you about, Dale, was the uh, 401k plans. I know mm -hmm. that the, the government had made some mention and changes to how much you could 
borrow and how long you could take that money out for? Um, yeah, I, you can take it out. I don't know the limits on what you can take out, but it's all going to be, if, if you're under 59 and a half, you're not gonna get charged any penalty for early withdrawal. You'll still all have to pay your income tax on it because you put that money into the 401k tax deferred. That means when it comes out, it's always going to be taxable. So the only thing that's good now is that they're not gonna charge the early withdrawal penalty. I, I, I wanna say it was $100,000 maximum. Uh, don't hold me to that, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. And I have a strong recommendation to my clients to not take out of their 401k unless they absolutely have no other choice. When you start bleeding your retirement, it's really, really hard to ever get it put back in. So okay. I try to get people not to, not to steal from themselves by taking out of their 401k. Find a better way if you can. Again, you know, everybody's circumstance is absolutely different from the next. So if you have no choice, you have to do what you have to do. And the government has at least put that through that you can, uh, that you can take it out penalty free. And I think they also lifted the contribution limits this year. And it used to be that after 70 and a half, you couldn't contribute anymore. And they've lifted that rule that you can contribute, you could continue to contribute if you're still working uh, and not get penalized for it. Okay. Yeah. I don't know the actual dollar amount. I want to say it's $100,000 maximum, but I'm not sure. That's a number that I think I heard as well. Um, but yeah, I definitely know they can reach out to their, their accountant or to you, you know, to you and get more information about that uh, later yeah, on. But just keep in mind, if you take out $100,000, you're going to pay income tax on that. You're paying income tax on the $100,000 in that, in that year. Yeah, you won't pay penalty, but you will pay the income tax oh, interesting. because it's, you put it in tax deferred. That's that's Unless good. It's Roth. Yeah, I, I know that the government is saying like you only take out that money if you're gonna if you're being subject you know subjected to an issue with COVID nineteen. They don't want right. you taking it for any reason. Um, but I did think that you know that there is a potential of people taking that money out and using it for other investments. Um, yeah, and we don't know how they're going to react to that. That's part of what you know we're getting. I'm getting updates from my my trade organizations. Uh, the National Association of Tax Preparers, uh, CTEC, uh, and uh, uh, a couple other training set, uh, training organizations that I belong to. The we don't know if the if if the government is going to force individuals and companies to prove that the money they took out was because of COVID nineteen or or if it was something similar to what you said, and then are they gonna come back and bark at you and say, well, now because it wasn't for that, you're gonna pay your penalties. They say no, at least that's been the strong indication from our trade, or, trade organizations, but you cannot, listen, money is not free. And $2.2 trillion, the government is gonna push back at some point in time and mm -hmm. start trying to recapture that money. Same thing even with the PPP loans that are coming out for businesses. If you can't, if you don't use that to, to pay for payroll and you cut back your payroll, there's going to be little quirks in the rule that are going to disallow the, the uh, forgiveness portion of that loan. And then even if you get all that to go good, the forgiveness portion for rents and utilities and other non-payroll related items is limited to 25% of the loan. So if you get the $40,000 loans, that means only $8,000 could be forgiven if you used it to pay for rent or utilities or other, other such non-payroll non related items. Yeah, so you should really be using the money for exactly what it's being payroll. intended for. Yeah. Um, so uh, if, you're just, if you're just tuning in, we've gone through several of these uh, topics before, but I just wanted to uh, touch base on um, the tax, the, ta the stimulus package. So the PP, the PPP SBA loans came out. Uh, there was the un some of the unemployment benefits came out with that. With that, we talked about the four hundred one k plans a little bit. Are there anything anything else that came out with the tax the um, stimulus package that you're Not aware so of? So far, I mean, other than the twelve hundred dollar payment that we're all going to supposedly get, unless you live in San Francisco where everybody makes more than seventy five k. Yeah. Um, I, I'm I'm not expecting anything, and anyway, so those <laughs> are supposed to come in the next two weeks. Yeah, 
So those are the big items that we should really be looking at right now if you fall into any of those categories of that we talked about earlier in this. Um, right. So if your adjusted gross income is uh, over 75,000, it's going to get scaled down. Uh, the 1200 is going to get scaled down until you make 99,000. And once you're at 99,000, there's nothing. It's 150,000 for married couples. So outside of anything with the new stimulus package, are there any other programs that you are taking advantage of that you're recommending clients to take advantage of that? You know, there may there is the this? extension to the, uh, the family medical leave act, which is called the FF, FFCCR which is an extension of the uh, Family Medical Leave Act. It, it has to do with COVID-19. It's uh, up to 80 hours of paid uh, medical leave. And it's for anybody, any employer that has 500 or 500 or less employer employees is mandatory to pay it to, your, to their employees. So you have to, there's six qualifications. And I'll, what I'll do after this is I'll send you the poster so that you can post it on your website. So there's six qualifications that mandate whether or not you're a, a qualified to get the the uh, uh, the leave act, the leave pay. And item one, which everybody thinks that uh, here's the misnomer, everybody thinks that because we're under a, a stay-at-home order in California and in San Francisco in particular, everybody thinks that because of that, they think that they qualify under item one. Item one is only if you've been ordered to quarantine or if you've been ordered to uh, 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 self-quarantine for 14 days. The stay-at-home order is not a quarantine by definition. So just the fact that you we've been under a stay-at-home order, you are not qualified to get the Medical Leave Act. Uh, but if, you're, if, you get, if you get or you have to take care of your child because the schools are closed, there's five different classifications. A lot of people will qualify, but... Uh, Everybody thinks in California they automatically do, and they that they do not. Okay, well, uh, that was one my last question, and I have now a question that I that came up when you were talking. So, if anyone does have a question, feel free to write it in the comments, and I'll ask um, I'll ask Dale about it. But um, so for the Medical Leave Act, um, yeah, I'm looking for that also, right now for you. Can you also um, discuss if there's any net benefits? specifically around childcare. So anyone that, you know, now has to pay for additional childcare outside of schooling or- I haven't heard anything are... about that, um, that I haven't heard anything. I don't know if there is something part of the, the I would think that there is. Uh, I thought I heard something about when you file your tax return, you're gonna get a stronger credit, but I, I don't know anything specific about that right now. Okay. Let me, I'm looking for that attachment here. I should have had it available. I apologize. Well, I'll give this another like uh, 15, 30 seconds, see if anyone has any questions that they want to type in here. Um, otherwise, I will go ahead and finish up this, uh, this Zoom call. So, um, so you're down. So you're down in San Diego, and um, are most of your clients based out of San Francisco Bay Area, and then also the San Diego area? Yeah, I have about eighty percent of my clients are still in San Francisco, and I used to commute every week back and forth. I haven't left San Diego now since. <laughs> I have not left San Diego since March the third. I've been Got here. It. Um, I, it was weird because on on Monday I would have been normally flew on March the tenth, and on Monday I. Uh, I just had this weird feeling that something was going to happen and I didn't know what it was. I said, I don't want to come back to San Francisco. And it was on noon, I canceled my flight. And on noon on Monday the 9th is when Mayor Breed announced the, the uh, shelter at home order. And I said, oh boy, that was kind of clairvoyant uh, that I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, come on up there because I would have been stuck in San Francisco then. This is where my house is, is down here. And I have an apartment in San, Diego, at San Francisco. So for anyone that is uh, just tuning in now or has tuned in late, we are finishing up the Zoom call. But I'm going to send you a quick recap. So if you want to go back and uh, you know see this on your see this on your own time um, as a recording, we did we did talk about uh, the SBA loan, the, the SBA PPP loan, the some unemployment um, um, credits. Right now, we talked about. 
uh, mortgage forbearance. We talked about 401k. Oh, I guess we do. Oh, we, we do have one, one question. Um, we talked about 401k, um, taking out the new extended amount with the delayed time with the delayed um, repayment. Yes. So feel free to go back and look at any of those uh, the entire video and you can get information about that. And we have one question about from um, uh, one of our viewers. Uh, they currently own one property. If we were to buy uh, another property and rent out the existing one, is there a good San Francisco specific resource that explains all the calculations in terms of income taxes, business taxes, deductions, et cetera, to know if it makes sense financially? First question is, are you a real estate agent? Uh, I'm a real estate agent, no, so I, I, I can help them. But th this, person, so question. This, uh, this person is not a real estate agent. Uh, they work. They work in a uh, tech industry. So you're you're limited on an individual basis on your on your real estate losses to twenty five thousand dollars a year. So even with depreciation and all the expenses that occur, if you end up losing money on your rental with depreciation, you're only you're capped at twenty five thousand dollars a year. The rest is suspended until such time that you sell the property or you uh, become a real estate, a professional real estate. So you have to, there's lots of rules. So I'm just gonna go over this quickly. There's one rule that says you have to work. You have to put $750, 750 hours into your, into your rental property a year in order to qualify for that. Then there's another 250 hour rule in order to get the, the, uh, the stimulus package bonus called QBI, which is you have to put 250 hours in a, a year on your property. And that can, that qualification can be anybody. It can be an electrical worker. It can be a landscaper. It can be all those hours added up have to exceed 250 hours. And then you get the QBI, the qualified business deduction. But the 750 is the one that proves up whether or not you're actively involved in it or if it's a passive activity. If you're not putting in the 750 hours a month to run your to run your real estate business, it's considered passive, and you're capped at twenty five thousand dollars. And um, so we, then we have another question. Uh, so this is I have a, a few single family residences in Los Angeles, which are investment properties. I moved back to India for six months uh, for six uh, six months ago, but kept my single family residents and rented them out. If I don't, if I'm not able to get rent on any of them, do I still get, can I still get mortgage forbearance? I'm not sure if you'll be able to answer that question or not. No, you have to deal with your mortgage company. Again, these are private companies that specifically if they're federally, if they're federally guaranteed loans to the mortgage company, they have no choice. They have to give you some sort of, some sort of holding on the mortgage payments. Meaning that if they're a VA loan, if they were backed by the, uh, uh, by Freddie Mac or Fannie Mae, then those are federally funded or federally guaranteed loans. And those companies, those mortgage holders that have those types of loans uh, are, can feel safe that the, the mortgage company is not gonna close them down or, or foreclose on them. But otherwise you still have to contact your real, I, don't, avoid your, don't avoid your mortgage company. <laughs> And um, deal after afterwards. If I can, if anyone has a specific question, can I, you know, send a quick email intro to you? To absolutely, and I just sent you that poster. Okay, sounds good. Well, that was. Um, if anyone else have, has any other questions that they that you want me to pose to deal, let me know. Type them in um, right now because at this point, deal. I'm gonna give let you kind of give your contact information over this and your email information. And um, if we don't have any questions um, by the time you're done, then I will uh, close this out. Very good. Uh, my name is Dale Peronto. My email address is, or the name of my company is American Eagle Consulting. And my email address is dale at AEC, the word and, A-N-D, and finally the letter B.com. So AEC and B.com. And I'll, and I'll put Dale's uh, contact information as well. Um, I'll go back and put it in as a comment um, in this live streaming video. So if you want to reach out to him, that, that you're um, able to do that. So uh, I don't have any other questions um, as of now. So thank you so much, Dale, for, uh, re for oh, do you know much about tax? Oh, I actually, I do have one question uh, that just came in. Sorry. 
Okay. He says, um, this is someone that's uh, living overseas, uh, has property here. Do you know much about taxes for digital nomads? Not sure I know that phrase. I, I, I think it's someone that can, that is probably working, that's able to work remotely. Uh -huh. um, I'm not, not exactly sure. If, uh, if you're able to give a little more info, info on this, uh, I'll ask the question. Otherwise, I might, uh, I'll connect you after this. Uh, yeah. This is I'm over. happy to help. And if I don't, one thing yeah. that you'll never know if you work with me, if I don't know the answer, I will not make it up. I'll tell you, I'll go look it up and get back to you, but I won't lie to you. Yeah. So if so I don't I'll, know I'll the answer, I'm going to tell you I don't know. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you so much, Dale, for uh, all your, for taking the time and doing this. And I oh, wish you man. all the best down in San Diego. Thank you. Sunny here today. <laughs> Sunny up here in San Francisco as well. <laughs> Bye. Very good. Thank you, everybody.